be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. I always feel real devotional when, when I see the gospel book being held up. A lot of times I'm holding it, I'm like, yeah, that's what I believe. And then we get to the ambo and we say, Lord, be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Lord, you be there. A lot of times people just say, glory to you, O Lord. <laughs> but really what it is is, Lord, be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. And that's what the gospel's about today. The Lord being in our minds, in our way of thinking. And so we can think as human beings do. Peter did in this gospel, and Jesus rebuked him for it. He says, you're thinking of hu as human beings do. Well, of course, we're human beings. That's how we think. It's easy. It's natural to think that way. But we can also think how God thinks. We can think that way. And that's the Holy Spirit in us. That's grace in us, alive. It's not easy. We don't do that naturally. And so we say, Lord, fill us with your grace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can think like God does and move how God does. And so the other part of the gospel is a whole new phase of ministry for Jesus. And I want this to be a whole new phase of discipleship for me and for you and for all of us and maybe even for our church a whole new phase of ministry for Holy Redeemer it says in the gospel from that time on the gospel said that once before 12 chapters earlier in the gospel of Matthew it said from that time on and it was the beginning of a ministry again it was the beginning of Jesus's earthly ministry and he was his ministry in Galilee and he had a word to say that word was repent. What does that mean? Change your mind. Change the way you think. Stop thinking like mere humans. Think like God. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. And they begin to follow him. Disciples begin to follow Jesus. That was then. We see a pattern from that time on. He begins a ministry. He has a message. People are following him. And now... The gospel says again, from that time on, he's not going back into Galilee. He's not preaching, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's going into Jerusalem. His journey's now to Jerusalem. And he says to his disciples, stay close. It's going to get really good. If you want to be mine, you're going to have to follow me. Now, what is he preaching? I'm going to have to suffer. The scribes, the Pharisees, the elders, they're going to torture me and hand me over to the Romans. They're going to crucify me. And I'm going to rise on the third day. That's his new message. Peter wants nothing to do with that message. He rebukes Jesus. And Jesus says to him, Get behind me, Satan. You're no rock. You're just a stone sticking out of the ground in the path that makes people fall down. You're a stumbling stone. Something in the ways, an obstacle 
is how they translated it. Scandalon is the word. It's where we get the word scandal or stumbling block. And so the message now is again from that time on. There's a new ministry and there's a new thought for us. We can think how God thinks. How cool is that? We can turn it all around. We can stay close to Jesus and follow him in a more excellent way in the way not just a human way and not just natural there's a story about a man named Fred he was very successful in business but he had to travel a lot and he had this hankering this thing in his heart to have a garden and so he had a friend who was perfect at that just he was someone who could build a wonderful garden in his building and so up on the roof he said I'd like you to put a garden but I can't be there so I need it to be low maintenance. I need sprinkler systems that come on automatically and that kind of a thing. And as the man was putting a, together his plan on how to do this, Fred kept emphasizing how he needed to be maintenance free and how he needed everything to just happen automatically. And finally the friend just turned around and said, Fred, there's no garden without a gardener. And Fred had to consider uh, what he was saying. And today, I think we hear that. There's no discipleship. There's no work in our life. There's no way of bringing about God's thoughts in our minds unless we're that gardener, unless we're the one who does that work to follow Jesus and to bring that about. And we are not that thing we call the self. We are not that we existed long before we had that ego, before we had that self. We had life, we had a soul, we had being, we were us. And the self is just something that attaches itself to us and gets in the way. And it becomes selfish, it becomes self-sustaining, it becomes self-preserving, it becomes self-aggrandizing, and it knows nothing about the way of God. It is a stumbling block and it gets in our way. That's the human way of thinking, isn't it? And there's a way of thinking that is God. Jesus says to Peter, you're not thinking like God does. The New Testament reading says this, don't be conformed, be formed. It's like being formed, right? Don't be conformed to this world. Be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of their mind. You're gonna be formed. But are you going to be conformed or are you going to be transformed? Are you going to think like mere humans do all the time or are we going to think like God thinks? That's what the whole message is all about. And there's churches that think this way. There's whole churches that think in human ways. And what do they become? They become selfish. They become all about us. All about self-sustaining this and self-preserving this. We gotta preserve what we got. And they become self-aggrandizing. It's all about this. Here's a question to help us think like God. How many people are in our parish? Do you know? Think about it for a minute. How many people are in Holy Redeemer Parish? I don't even know how many registered parishioners we have. I won't count. I'm a little superstitious, I don't know. Uh, but I've been told we have a thousand families registered or maybe 1,200 families are registered uh, and that is good news we keep adding but that's not the question is it that's just human thinking anyways that's not thinking like God you know what the answer is we have 19,000 people in our parish did you know that our parish goes way over there you know, at some road called Sinner and way over there, our parish goes way up there and way down there. 19,000 people live in our parish and it's all about them. That's God's way of thinking. Jesus didn't say, man, I'm part of the Trinity. I love the Trinity so much. I'm going to go down on earth and get people to love the Trinity. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he came so that the whole world might share in that life, in that love, in that joy. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. I didn't come 
because I wanted people to take care of me. I wanted to come because I wanted to take care of them. And there's a lot of them, and they need a lot of care. And we're the ones who are called to do it. Jesus says, stay close to me. Follow me. Be that church. Be that church that takes care of the 19,000 out there. How many people do we have? I don't know, 19,000 plus everyone who comes to church. Right? That's who's in our parish. And so the question we can put to ourselves individually too, can't we? How about us? What goes on in our own soul? Do we think like mere humans? That's easy, that's natural. Of course we do. That's just the way humans are. But do we think like God? Have we been transformed by the renewing of our mind? Or have we been conformed to this world? Do we think like this world is? Is it all about other people? Do we give our life away? Do we live our life for others? Do we serve others? Are we selfish? Are we self-sustaining only? Are we self-preserving? Are we self-grandizing? What are we? Are we following Jesus? Do we think like God? Or do we say we're just a stumbling block? God's called you today to be a rock. To be a rock to be transformed, to have your minds thinking like God. And that means it's not about self. It's not about self-preservation. It's not about self-sustaining. Our God takes care of us. We put all our trust in God. It's about those out there. It's about serving them and bringing the gospel. It's about forgiving, renewing, uh, and restoring. The question is, the question is, will you repent? Will you change the way you think? Will you completely turn it around? Will you be that people that follows Jesus into Jerusalem, laying down your life for the salvation of the whole world? This is our faith at its very best, isn't it? And what a wonderful faith we have.